Elon Musk really thinks our future is on Mars. Being one of the wealthiest people on Earth, he's putting all he's got into making a city on Mars come true. Imagine a million of us living together under a huge space dome, building an ideal community, while the folks back on Earth are left out. Sounds cool, right? It sure does on paper, but the deeper we look at Elon's plans for Mars, the more we start to wonder, is there information being kept a secret? Well, Elon often talks about this extraordinary chance we have right now. Life on Earth has been around for over 3 billion years, but it's only today, in our incredible time, that we've got the tech to leave our planet and step into another. This is a huge deal. For the first time in billions of years, we've got this opportunity, but we don't know how long it'll last. If we miss this shot, it might be gone for good. That's why Elon's plan is to ship a million people to Mars with 100 million metric tons of stuff to make a city that can survive on its own on Mars. This big plan means sending a thousand Starship rockets back and forth between Earth and Mars every two years. It's a huge, almost magical task, but it sort of makes sense. Still, it makes you wonder, what's so special about Mars for him? Sadly, when we're looking for a backup planet, our choices are pretty limited. The moon is a cold, empty desert close by but it's not really an excellent place for life as we know it. Venus is even worse with its super hot acidic air. It's so unwelcoming that our space probes can only last a few minutes before they get destroyed by tough conditions. Then there's Mars. It's not ready for us to just move in. It needs a lot of fixing up. But Elon Musk thinks Mars has potential. He's even hopeful that Mars could be made to look like Earth one day. Mars has an atmosphere, though it's a lot thinner than Earth's, which makes it already better than the moon. And unlike Venus's extreme heat, Mars is a bit easier to handle. Its gravity is less than Earth's, but much stronger than the moon's, which is good. Mars is also full of natural resources, like water. There's proof that Mars once had huge oceans, and a lot of this water is still there, frozen in polar ice caps. Plus, Mars has this cool red color, making it an exciting option for a place we might live in our solar system. So, it looks like Mars is our best shot for a less dangerous option in our space neighborhood. But that doesn't mean it's totally safe. Elon Musk has been pretty open about how tough it is. He says that the trip to Mars will be cramped, risky, and involve a ton of hard work, with a real chance of not making it. Hope you're up for it, he said pointing out that moving to Mars is not going to be easy from the start. But just how tough will life be on Mars? On average, the temperature is around negative 60 degrees Celsius or negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit, though it can get up to a nice 20 degrees Celsius in the middle of summer at the equator. But don't think it'll be easy to just chill out with a cold drink. Mars's atmosphere is really thin and mostly made of carbon dioxide, with less than 1% of the atmosphere we have on Earth. This means we won't have enough air to breathe, and there's hardly any protection against the nasty space radiation that Earth's atmosphere keeps away from us. Without this shield, we'd be exposed to radiation that could harm us, though it is a wild thought whether this could somehow turn us into superheroes. Gravity on Mars is another thing to think about, being only about a third as strong as Earth's. This might actually be good news, especially after spending seven months in zero gravity, which makes our bodies weaker. Getting used to Mars's gravity could be easier and help astronauts build their strength back up. But coming back to Earth's stronger gravity after a long time could be really tough. Then there's the famous Martian dust storms that can cover the whole planet. Keeping dust under control will be super important because it can get into and mess up equipment. Making sure everything we take to Mars is dustproof will be a key job. Keeping solar panels clean on Mars is going to be a big task, showing us Mars isn't exactly a cozy place. As Elon Musk has said, there's a high chance things could go wrong. The room for mistakes is incredibly small. Any small error or breakdown could be deadly. 
Elon even told CNN in an interview that he'd think about going to Mars himself only if he knew SpaceX would be okay without him. This shows that even he, the visionary behind this idea, knows how significant the risks are. Even with all these risks, the idea of building a city on Mars is still alive. Driven by visions of living under a shiny space dome, by making it on Mars means we have to deal with some tough environmental dangers. Non-stop radiation, tiny meteorites, a very thin atmosphere, and dust storms that can bury our buildings in huge clouds of electrified dust. Whether our buildings, like the giant dome, can withstand these issues is a big concern. Radiation is a huge problem for living in their long term. On Mars, we'd face 40 to 50 times more solar radiation than on Earth, mostly because Mars doesn't have a protective magnetic field. Mars doesn't have a liquid core to create the shield, and this thin atmosphere doesn't offer much protection against cosmic rays and solar winds. Plus, the thin air doesn't do much to stop meteors. On Earth, our thick atmosphere burns up most meteorites before they can hit the ground, greatly lowering the risk of impact. But on Mars, without much atmospheric protection, meteorites could be a big danger. With Mars's atmosphere being less than 1% as thick as Earth's, a meteorite could hit with almost all its original speed and force. If one hit our Martian dome, the outcome could be disastrous. Also, the low atmospheric pressure is hazardous for us. If our living space got a hole and lost pressure, it would be awful. Our blood would turn into gas and our eyes could be severely damaged. To deal with these big risks, living underground might be a good plan and Elon Musk knows it. At a conference in 2017, when he was talking about how his tunnel burrowing projects could help us with living on Mars, Elon pointed out that being good at making tunnels could really help in setting up homes on Mars, keeping us safe from radiation. With the right tunneling tech, we could build a big underground city on Mars, away from the harsh conditions on the surface. People might still need to go above ground now and then, but living underground could be a big deal. Then comes the question, how do we feed millions of people on Mars? The idea of Matt Damon's character in The Martian, growing potatoes, using his smarts, and a few resources gives us a fun yet interesting way to think about it. Turning human waste into fertilizer and making water from simple chemicals shows that with some creativity and science, making food on Mars might not be as impossible as we thought. Could we do what those made-up Martian farmers did for real on Mars? This brings up another question. Can we just plant seeds from Earth in Martian soil and expect them to grow? The answer is yes. But there are some things to think about. Even though we haven't touched Martian soil yet, all of the rover missions have taught us a lot about what's in Martian dirt. Just like in the movie with Matt Damon, Martian soil has a bunch of important nutrients that plants need, like oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, potassium, and phosphorus. However, a big issue with Mars is that it doesn't have life. So its soil lacks the organic stuff that Earth's soil is full of, like worms, bugs, and decomposed plants and animals. This organic matter is really important for plants to grow well here on Earth. That's why, in the story, human waste was used to add the needed organic material to the Martian soil. What's cool is that this idea isn't just made up. A real experiment in 2014 used fake lunar and Martian soils to grow plants in a greenhouse, showing that with some tweaks, farming on Mars could be possible. The results of this experiment are pretty exciting. While plants in the fake lunar soil didn't do as well as those in Earth soil, the ones in the fake Martian soil caught up and sometimes did even better, producing more biomass in some cases. This success came even though they had to add stuff like cut grass to the fake space soil. However, neither the story nor the 2014 experiment mentioned the high levels of harmful chemicals like calcium perchlorate found in Martian soil. These chemicals can hurt plant growth and might make the plants toxic 
if they take up these salts. Looking at these challenges, dealing with a risky environment, the need for underground homes to stay safe, and figuring out how to grow safe food reminds you of the dark future shown in movies like Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. The movie paints a gloomy picture of Earth and the idea of starting fresh on another planet, which feels quite relevant when thinking about the huge task of making a lasting human settlement on Mars. It makes you wonder, are we really prepared to take on such an uncertain new adventure? This situation hints that if we need to really convince people to move to these new space colonies, maybe the living conditions there are even tougher than what we are facing on an Earth that's becoming less habitable. But when we look at history, we see a different perspective. Think about the Europeans moving to North America. A lot of them were running from something, like poverty, being persecuted for their beliefs, debt, or trouble with the law. They were drawn by promises of owning land, freedom, and a chance to start over in a new world. For many settlers, this risk was worth it, leading to success in America and the start of what would become a significant global influence. This story is well known and celebrated. However, it's also true that not everyone made it. Many couldn't handle the tough conditions they found themselves in. They faced things like hunger, harsh weather, fights with native people, and dangerous animals, all which were big risks to staying alive. Even though there are risks, the promise of a fresh start has driven these people. Now, hundreds of years later, we might be able to start a trip similar to that to Mars. In line with what Elon Musk said, the outcome is unknown, but the adventure promises to be unlike anything else.